Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Hello beer fans and welcome back to Friday 5pm. On a week where everything's changing, Johnny, in the world. Brad's introducing the podcast. We may be, well hopefully not be entering into a sort of massive global war, which would obviously be the worst possible scenario of the current timeline. But um, I've had quite a nice week in beer, Johnny. How about you? (laughs) There we go. I was waiting. I'm sure Brad's got a way of turning this round into a happy Friday welcome. And there it is. Uh, I, I too have had a good week in beer, but not as good as you, because you hit the old Bermsey beer mile for the first time in two years. Well, I've, well, I wouldn't say a few years, but probably in a year, um, I kind of keep a low profile, and I, I go to Maltby <laughs> Street Market not what occasionally. You do. What, well, what actually, nonsense yeah, is that? I usually I'm wearing a, a, a sort of fluorescent orange coat or some sort of Aztec pattern uh, outfit, or or even checkers these days. But um, I'm sort of like a peacocking peacock, essentially. Yeah, peacocking <laughs> peacock, Johnny. Just say, look at me, look at me. Um, but yeah, I was I was down on the Burmo Beer Mile. Um bit of an impromptu thing. I just had a a Saturday uh afternoon where I just felt like I needed to get out, but we couldn't really get me and my girlfriend couldn't really get that motivated to go out that early. So we sort of hit up Maltby Street Market a little bit late. Um I had one empanada thing, which are great. I love them, but they'd run out of the one I normally have, which is like a sort of cheese and hammy bad boy uh so i didn't have a massive amount of food in my belly to start off the beer mile but oh, um, brad's tail to drink <laughs> and start with i didn't have enough food well i ate a big breakfast you see but then i kind of we we didn't sort of eat until about four or something but anyway we went to ants batch and hob day first of all beers were tasting great tap room was absolutely heaving okay. uh had a had a nice pint of black in there then we went on to, uh, where did I go after that? I can't even remember. Oh, Cloudwater, because I haven't been to Cloudwater in probably two years. Um, and it's always an experience. So uh, I went in there and it was it was kind of same old Cloudwater, you know, with kind of stylish flags on and sort of like nice mood lighting. That's um, right, music. I don't really remember much music, but I, I think it was it was pretty buzzy in there, so... Uh, I seem to remember in the Manchester Tap Room they have like motivational yeah. speakers, like not quite TED talks, but weirder yeah, 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 in yeah. the loos and stuff. I don't know if they, it's the same at the Bermsey one. They had Buddhist sort of chanting in the the Manchester one when we were in there last time, <laughs> and it was I, you're sort of having a, a trying to have a, a a number two and someone sort of urging you on in a sort of very kind of like you can do it kind of motivational kind of way. It was it was interesting um with gong sort of sounds and stuff so i guess it covers uh any sort of splashes and, and whatnot you know that's the Jesus. thing isn't it ja- okay ja- japanese toilets they they have like on the toilet roll holder they've got like a button you can press with a speaker on it that makes different noises to cover any sort of embarrassing noises is that is that true yeah 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 i've seen it i've seen it i don't know whether do the guys uh, um who make cranky do they have? They have like crazy Exhale, toilets. Exhale have Japanese toilets. I, I don't remember there being a button for yeah. modest a modesty button. Perhaps, modesty. Th- that's it. what it is. It is a modesty button. That's what it is. But I, 
I haven't been to the loo in there actually. So, uh, but anyway, <laughs> Brad, I didn't. I did not ask which loos have you been to recently. Oh, well, I could. Yeah, I could tell you a, a story as 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 long as time. Uh, what about what, loos, what but... did you drink at Cloudwater? Oh, what, at what, Cloudwater, what did you have? I I had uh, a lovely uh, cosmic pale ale, which had sort of like lovely New Zealand hops in it. It was tasting real nice. Um, I only had a half in there, and then but at that point, I'd had my friend Radim. Uh, who who works for Budvar uh, had sort of messaged me saying, "Did I want to meet up for a drink on the mile?" And also uh, our friend Josh Meller, uh, one of our patrons who now works for Brew by Numbers. Um, so we all sort of converged on Brew by Numbers, and then Josh just wheeled out one more uh ten percent dipper after another wheeled out the ten percent welcome wagon and my god you, you um, started to regret your lack of empanadas oh it was it got a, it got a little bit messy um but it was really nice there was a there were a few patrons that sort of swung by and said hey um it's something i i i'm gonna endeavor to try and do a bit more is get back on the mile because it is great um and i went past a place that I'd never seen before. I think it's been there a while, but I can't remember what it's called, but it's a skate park that's also a craft beer bar or brewery. I sort of just poked my head in very quickly. There you, you go. There's of... probably a, a strong Venn diagram there. No, I, I'm not aware of that, but it sounds incredibly dangerous. Yeah, I thought this is a, this is a bad combo, getting drunk and skating. But um, there's, a, there's quite a lot of sort of street skating, I guess, goes on around that part of London. So... I guess it makes sense that they would go, huh, there are these people that are hanging about all day, every day. Maybe we can get them in with some ramps and persuade them to uh, drink some beer. But yeah, I thought that was cool. So I might check that out another time. Um, Can can you skate? I feel like you probably, mm, like me, tried and failed in your teens. I tell you what, mate, one of my big, I've got a few regrets in life. One of them is not learning to play the electric guitar or any guitar. Another one is not. Uh, learning to skateboard in my youth yeah, i you could have been a very different guy just you know yeah. rocking up to parties with your acoustic guitar and your mini skateboard and, in your backpack. and skateboard oh my yeah. god i'd be how obnoxious would i be if i <laughs> <laughs> start cracked out an acoustic guitar at a party I, I wouldn't like me i don't think i wouldn't like my i wouldn't like that that version of brad but um yeah i i never learned i i was more of a rollerblader so i'm, I'm actually a pretty good rollerblader i could grind um I can obviously like skate backwards and do all sorts of shit like that. I, I'm still, I reckon I'm still all right at rollerblading. I did not know this about you. So you, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I used to rollerblade a lot, Bradley. Is, is this oh. been some? some Have kind you still of... got rollerblades? Uh, they're probably at my parents' place. I used to play street hockey. Is actually what I used to do. So oh, I, didn't, I wasn't doing I tricks do and stuff, but yeah, but I played yeah, yeah. played street hockey. We need to do a video. Mounted on rollerblades, where we're we're doing something on rollerblades. Maybe we go to the skate park on rollerblades, and there everybody will hate us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be there in helmet, knee pads. Yeah, uh, I, I I I I can't see that panning out well for for either of us. Um, no. But maybe if we're sponsored, it's it's worth the concussions. Yeah, what's sponsored by rollerblade or someone else? I, I don't K2 think rollerblade is a company, but yeah, we'll. We'll get. I mean, vans. They'd be up for it, wouldn't they? I wear a lot of van to, stuff. We could go to House of Vans and be the least popular guys in there. Yeah. Apart from um, scooter boys and girls, those little micro scooters. Have you seen people doing tricks on those? That is a thing. Yeah, I have seen that on the. I've, skate park, I've seen someone yeah. do like a total flip, like flip over their head and then land it. Oh, well, that's I mean, quite impressive. But I was going to say it's, it's in... just a skateboard you can hold on to. To me. Yeah, but they got tiny little silly piddly wheels that they're, they're not i don't know they're just the, the center of gravity is all different isn't it so you can't really can't get that radical johnny can't get that rad man <laughs> can't get that brad man um yeah well so g- glad you had fun on the mile oh, um yes. the, the reason brad uh started at Anspach and hob day is because also this week we were filming at the brewery uh for the first time so we it was one of the first videos i think we ever made back in 2013 yeah. we went and visited them on their opening night um, and drank their porter. And so this week we're making a film about London Black trying to take over the taps of London. Um, and that sort of, the recipe is loosely based on the porter. It's sort of them going, a 6.7% porter is never going to take over the world. But hey, how about a nitro porter in the home of Porter of London? 
Yeah, man, I, it's it's a great story. Um, I lo- uh, I really enjoy the beer. I'm gonna put it out there. I think the beer is great. Um, and it's gonna be a fun ride when the video it's- comes out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna have a lot. Of, it's a sponsored video because they're you know they're sort of putting their putting their weight behind this this brand um, as their core beer. Um, but we we've got a really fun twist on the video that's going to be a lot of fun when it comes out in a couple of weeks. Um, so we filmed the first half, which was all about the brew day. Uh, and while we were there, we got to taste. Uh, it's actually mostly lagers, wasn't it? That they were pouring. Yeah, for us. yeah. Um, we had a, a delicious uh, uh, Rauch wine. Uh, that was amazing. Which was oh, it was like a really sweet, honeyed, toasty bock, but then soft, uh, bacony, bacony smoked vibes. Um, yeah, the hellas straight from the tank was tasting unreal. Um, what else did we have? We had to, we had a uh, we did have a bock. We had a bock. We did have well. a bock. Yeah, that was yeah, with yeah, brown yeah. malt, so it was really toasty, really nice. Yeah, the uh, the first one you said the Rauch wine. Um, I suggested that we pair it with an IKEA hot dog. Because we were <laughs> about a five minute walk away from IKEA Croydon um in the in their brewery location. So I would say if you're heading to IKEA Croydon uh to buy, you know, household essentials of a weekend, go and check out the tap because it's quite nice. I would I would love to hear from from our patrons in the Patreon forum or from from everyone else on, on Twitter or Facebook. Is it is it all right to go to IKEA and just eat? Like literally treat IKEA like a restaurant? Because when Brad suggested this, I was like about to apologize to them for Brad being weird. And then they were <laughs> all up for it. Yeah, I think you're missing out on the, the beauty of um of of how sort of well just it's it's dependable. It never changes, right? So that you that sometimes you just want those meatballs. If they're plant balls, meatballs, whatever they are. With the lingonberry, with with the the gravy stuff, I'm a chip guy. I go chips. I don't go mash, which is very unorthodox. Um, and I always feel like I'm not a real Swede when I do that. Well, you're not a re- okay. Come yeah. on, Johnny. But you know, you got you got to get involved, right? You <laughs> telling me you don't like those little dime bar cakes? Those dime bar cakes are fit. They're crazy they're, good. They're okay for what is made in a giant factory. Yes, um, yes, yes. As desserts go, the balls, the balls are shit, Brad. Come IKEA on, meatballs up. are horrifically overrated. The only reason we rate them is because we're we're so depressed at being in IKEA <laughs> that it's just this little. It's comfort ray of food. Life. Yeah, it's comfort food. It's like so you say you're com- like, you, you know, say if you don't depressed. have a beer for a year. Yeah, you know, and then you have a Foster's. You'll probably be like, actually, that's a great beer, but it's not. It was a yeah. great moment. I genuinely enjoy going to IKEA, Johnny. I'm putting it out there. I look forward to going to IKEA. I'm I'm a weird I know it's a weird thing to say. I really like that brand and I enjoy looking at what new things they've got out. I'm always like, how can they make this for this amount of money? Oh, because it's made of like crazy technical fiberboard paper stuff that isn't really wood and you know it's all you you know what i i agree with everything that you're saying and i think that ikea is a cool brand that does some amazing design and when i'm there sometimes i'm like oh that is super cool but as a place to go (laughs) i'd pretty much rather be anywhere else well i'll tell you what mate the one the new one that opened up in greenwich this is a basic we try to get do you know the difference between different london ikeas oh my god the new one that's opening greenwich is the whole thing is based around giant windows so you can see you can actually see daylight johnny you can see daylight so it is you're walking around there's beautiful sun coming in or you can you know the, the ikea thing when i was a kid walking around ikea i just remember hearing you know, my sort of vivid memory is you could hear the rain on the roof. Like they always have those massive tin roofs that just make like tippy tappy real. It sounds like there's a torrential storm or whatever going on outside. Tippy tappy roof, ASMR vibes. But um, this one you can actually see outside. You can see the delights of the Greenwich Peninsula. Um, and it's also, here's a little stat for you. It's the largest restaurant. Yes, I'm calling it a restaurant. Largest restaurant. In South London, south of the river, the largest restaurant, IKEA, Greenwich restaurant. Boom. Mic drop. Walking away from the mic, Johnny. What? Don't, what don't, what... <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, um, this every day's a school day, but I've learned more in the last 10 minutes about Bradley Evans than I think I have in mm. the, how long have we known each other? 12 oh. years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've learned about my love of Ikea, my acceptance of the greatness of meatballs in, in my life. and Your roller uh, skating past. Roller, rollerblading past. You regret to be... not being a, a that guy at a party with an acoustic guitar? Exactly. Well, actually, no, I would never want to be that guy at a party. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's a good thing I didn't do it, but um, I do regret not being able... I regret so much not being able to play guitar, Johnny, that I bought a beautiful um, pink soft baby pink uh squire telecaster yeah no at, i admired it when i came around pandemic mate I've, I've put it back in the box um i didn't i didn't learn to play it i just found it too intimidating to sort of get started on on the journey did you, did you sit down and try or did did you just sort of stare at it and it stared back yeah i just stared at it I, it sat on my armchair um to the left of where i'm sat right now and i just felt like it was sort of sneering at me condescendingly every day when i didn't say hello to it and and strum it delicately um so i I had to put it back in its box you've never played a chord on the guitar you bought during lockdown no no but good news johnny i think it's actually worth a lot more money than i paid for it now because it's a limited edition color so uh (laughs) of course it is. you know you always got to look on the upside i think i had a little strum on it so i hope that hasn't devalued it oh well, I can I can say a guy that was nearly signed to Parlophone Records <laughs> played this guitar. What do you reckon? I think you'd be better off saying Johnny from the Craft Beer Channel than <laughs> failed Maybe. musician uh, Johnny Garrett. Well, you know these are these are both these are both good things. These are both good things. It is a good thing that I failed as a musician. Not, um, not that you failed, that you tried. <laughs> I tried. I did try. I did. I didn't just try to stare down a guitar. No. Uh, for for a year. Um, anywho, uh, we are a beer podcast, uh, despite oh, the fact that this this podcast is brought to you almost exclusively by IKEA. Um, Sixteen minutes in, Johnny. I can't believe it. This has got to be a record. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this week's video um, yeah. was quite quite the thing. Um, so a bit of background to this: we we got approached. Um, by Ash, who is is helping Brianne with the Brave Noise campaign. The Brave Noise campaign is uh, raising awareness and raising money and encouraging brewers to put out code of conduct to uh, encourage beer to be a more diverse place and a safer place uh, for women and for uh, minorities, people of people of color, um, LGBTQ plus people. Um, and they just said, you know, we'd love it if you could do something for us. We know that you've you've talked about this kind of stuff on your podcast and on your channel. Um, what could you do? And I said, well, we'll, we'll brew the brave noise beer. And if you're up for it, we'll, we'll have a chat about the campaign and how people can get involved, even if they're not a brewer or a home brewer. Um, and that culminated in the longest video we've done in about a year, 27 minutes of, of me brewing and then chatting to Brianne Allen, who, uh, was the, uh, I guess the lightning rod for is about 6,000 stories of sexism, sexual assault, um, sexual harassment, and then uh, branching off into other forms of prejudice. Um, and I, I think it was... I, I, well, I, I don't know how good the video was. Like, I'm far too close to it. But I think, you know, the chat that I had with Brianna and her, the stuff that she's done is incredibly powerful um, and made a huge difference to the beer world already. And so, you know, we've seen tired hands change hand, modern times change hand, uh, resignations at places like Dry and Bitter, um it's just been you know the biggest movement i think craft beer has ever seen biggest social movement yeah i think you know obviously we, we all need to be talking about this in in the, the sort of beer beer universe um and yeah it'd be it, it'd be nicer to see other sort of channels and and people um take this on as well i think but uh yeah. Yeah, I think, it, you know, the thing that struck me in the comments, which we'll get into in a little bit, was that this was seen as controversial to talk about it. We weren't telling anybody you had to do anything. It got a little bit emotional at times because it's an emotional topic. But yeah, I, I've been shocked that there's only four breweries in the UK that have joined this campaign and yeah. that we are, I think, I, I, I can't think of another platform 
uh, another video broadcast platform that's done it. I mean, Goodby Hunting have done podcasts and stories and followed it all the way from the start and done an incredible job um, of, of reporting it. But in, in terms of sort of the influencer yeah. end, yes, Be a I'm, I'm not aware such. of anything on, on, on YouTube at all, which which is a real shame. Yeah, totally, totally, man. I think, you know, we the, the more we talk about this stuff, the less uh, places there are for, for this sort of thing to go on and yeah, things, absolutely. you know, people to hide and, and whatnot. Yeah, and I think I think that the reason that this is that sexism has come so pervasive in the beer industry is because people haven't known where to turn when it happens, haven't known how to intervene. So the more we talk about it, the more understanding. You know, from me chatting to Brianne in that conversation and also chatting to her and other people beforehand, I understand how much is going on and how I can help now. And that was very much the point of the video as well. It's like, if you see this, this is what we can do. And that was sort of all I wanted to get from the video to, you know, it's interesting, you know, we had, I don't know, 10 trolls. We lost about 40 subscribers. Um, so 50 people, or maybe they're the same people, um, vehemently disagreed with this for their own reasons. Um, and then obviously, you know, we had about 200 comments of support. Um, and in between those two extremes, there's probably hopefully, well, probably hopefully, lots of people who didn't know about this who maybe have had their mind changed or influenced or been looking for this and finally found it. So I really hope it has has made a difference. But it's just incredibly, incredibly hard to tell when you stick your neck out. But I think I think it's gone over pretty well. Yeah, I think you know it's a. I, I think it was quite a brave video to make. It's always hard, like you say, sticking your neck out. But if it's uh, something that needs to be talked about, um then it, it, we, we, we kind of have a moral responsibility to at least put it on our radar um, as as people that, ha- that have an, in- an influence and, and people watch us uh, for this particular interest. We need to be uh, discussing it because yeah. that's, how it, that's how it goes away. I think we... We've always made a decision on the Craft Beer channel to to keep negativity to a minimum. Like it's why we don't really do beer reviews and stuff like that because that 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 side of it doesn't particularly interest me. But I think that any platform that has an audience that isn't talking about the issues within the topic that they cover is doing a massive disservice. You know, it's it's that whole idea of neutrality being complicity. If you're not talking about sexism in beer, then you are complicit with it happening. And that that's something that really hit me when Brianne's Instagram story started breaking. That, you know, I'd known some of it was happening. I had no idea what the scale of it was. And I realized that by not looking into that, by not talking about it with uh, women that I know in the industry or men that I know in the industry who might have seen it going on, then I was complicit in it. I was being silent on this issue that I knew existed. And the scale of it made me reevaluate that. And I hope that the video did as well. With You know, when you say the sixth, one one of the trolls on the video was trying to break down the statistics and he was like right there's 150,000 people working in the beer industry in America you've got 6,000 stories that's like 4% have a tale to tell that's nothing it's not endemic and I was like well no these are all stories from women there's 39,000 women in beer 6,000 stories that's one in six women have been sexually uh, have either been um, experienced prejudice or assault or harassment and it's just it's just Brianne's Instagram as well. It's a tiny sample of those thirty nine thousand people. Like this is fucking endemic. And the the comment actually that I picked out um, was uh, was is, is sort of along along those lines. So is is Stephen Atohi who said uh, massive respect for speaking out. I love this industry so much. And after Brianne's stories went viral, I started going around and asking all my female bartender friends if they had similar experiences. Literally every single one said yes. Mm. so that there's not there's not a woman working that he's met in the beer industry that hasn't um experienced prejudice harassment sexual assault and you might go like well yeah there's sexism every day but i have never once experienced sexism in the beer industry as a man not once no no so i had it's it's clear yes it is clear it is clear i had a, a comment from jasper Paulette, who says beer is for the people and should be for all the people. Let's never back down from making our bars, festivals, breweries, uh, and what not a better and sef- and safer place for everyone. Preach. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
yeah, I, I, one of the things I was pleasantly surprised about, A, was how few trolls there were, how few unsubscribes we had, but also how few people came in and said, like, beer is a man's drink or brewing is a man's game. We had literally one. Um, and he was he was summarily dispatched. Um, Jer- Jeremy Clarkson or someone. <laughs> so that, <laughs> he, he waded in. Um, yeah. yeah, so, you know, there is definitely this acceptance. We can't have it sort of both ways. If we believe that beer is for everybody, then we have to stand up and make sure that it is. Um, and that's what the editorial code that comes off the back of this video is hopefully going to do for us. We're going to make sure that we're telling more diverse stories and being less passive and more active in promoting beer as a diverse space. Um, so you can read that. I'll put a link uh, to the new code of conduct uh, for the Craft Beer Channel in the descriptor. Um, and also all of the advertising revenue from this video will be donating um, to one of the charities uh, that Brave Noise are promoting. Not quite sure which one yet. I need to have that conversation with you, Brad, so we'll pick a charity. Um, currently it stands at $25, so hopefully that's going to go up. Uh, and, and and if not, maybe we'll, we'll donate a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that was that was this week's video. Thank you so much to everybody that commented. Um, whatever your views, thank you so much to everyone that commented, but especially those that, that got behind this and are getting behind what, what we're trying to do at, at Craft Beer Channel. And hopefully we can do you proud uh, with the content that we're making uh, for the rest of the year. Um, I've got to be honest, Bradley. So the question that we've received mm. is massive. It's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah. It's absolutely massive. And I wonder whether we should leave it uh, for now, because we're at 25 minutes. Uh, we've been on quite the journey already. I think so, we should leave it. Yeah, leave maybe it the geopolitical time. implications of the Ukraine invasion on the beer space can wait for another episode. <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, I hope it can't wait. And I hope it all, you know, there's a, a succession of, of uh, aggression from dickhead Putin. Um, but yeah. Uh, in in all in all reality we can probably talk about it next week sadly yeah let's let's save the question for next week but i should say uh that um there is a campaign going around uh the beer industry uh that will uh i'll, I'll put all of the links to it but essentially um owen walsh who's, who's a beer writer um and a ukrainian beer writer um um are coming up with a campaign so that you, uh, people can donate um to certain causes in ukraine uh there's a sort of a, a brave noise style beer that you can brew to show your support it's an unimperial stout anti-imperial stout um based on borscht so it's got a uh, uh, beetroot in it um right. and also they're doing an auction so that you can raise money so we're going to be uh doing an auction at some point of some books and some merch and stuff like that that you guys can buy and all the money will go straight uh to the causes um that that campaign's pushing to so I'll, I'll put some links to all of that uh in the description of this podcast as well and it will be all over our social and in our patreon forum um so that you know where to find everything and we'll dig into what effect you know the ukraine war has on malt prices which is obviously significantly less important uh next week um anything left to say bradders uh no just love and beer as always guys and stay safe out there wherever you are in the world and just be nice to your fellow humans because it doesn't cost anything and uh we've all got to get along right because we've only got one one planet earth so let's all be nice to each other the bubble and friday 5 p.m podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind youtube's craft beer channel you can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum, a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer. Love and beer.